Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In this video, we're going to talk about the impacts of stereochemistry on reactions. So when we do a reaction that we discussed in the last chapter, the addition of HBr to a double bond, what you'll notice is that there's stereochemistry that could result from this process. So when you add HBr, the first step generates a carbocation after protonation, and that carbocation is sp2 and planar, and it has a lobe on both sides of that plane. So if you're going to do the next step with a bromide ion, that could add either on the top of that structure or the bottom of that structure with equal likelihood. And without anything else chiral in the reaction, you can only form a 50-50 mixture of these two possibilities. There's no difference in the energies of these two different pathways. So if it adds from the top, the bromine will be coming out towards us, and this is the R isomer. And if it adds from the bottom, the bromine is going away from us, and this is the S isomer. So what we form is a racemic mixture of these two products, a 50-50 mixture of enantiomers. Well, this is a big challenge in organic chemistry. How do we synthesize molecules as a single enantiomer when we don't have any way to control the difference in energetics of adding to something like a carbocation? Other reactions have similar situations. So if we look at the bromination, of cyclopentene with Br2, we know that we form a bromonium ion, and this bromonium ion, although the product is trans, we can end up with two different enantiomers from this, because the second step, the bromide, if it adds on the left side, it'll put the bromine in this position, on the bottom and this position on the right, if the bromine adds to the right side and breaks that bond, you'll put the bromine on the bottom in this position and the bromine on the top in that position. And if you look at this carefully, what you'll see is that these are two different enantiomers and they are not superimposable, they are different. Without anything else chiral in the reaction, this will be a 50-50 mixture of enantiomers or a racemic mixture. Cis-2-butene, if you do the reaction with bromine, you get the similar kind of effect. We can make the bromonium ion. So if I put the methyl groups here and the hydrogen's coming out towards us, the next step, the bromide, can add either on this side or on this side. You would end up with two different isomers, which look like this. One is the SS isomer, the other is the RR isomer. This would form a pair of enantiomers. Since now we have all single bonds, the bonds can rotate, and we can draw this in the uh, staggered chain fashion for the alkane chain. And what we see is that the SS isomer would show in the way I've drawn it here, both of the bromines on the top of the paper and the RR isomer with both of the bromines going away from us from the paper. Well, if we take the trans 2-butene and carry out the same reaction, we get a different result. What we form is a meso compound again, and that can be easily seen if I draw the carbon in this particular fashion. You can see that there's a plane of symmetry right through the molecule. It's a little bit harder to see when we draw it in this open chain fashion. Even though we can get stereospecific introductions of groups, that is the bromines are added on opposite sides from the bromonium, we still form racemic mixtures or meso compounds from these reactions. If there's already a stereogenic carbon in the molecule, the configuration of that carbon can have an influence on reactions. For example, the bromination of the S isomer of 3-methyl cyclopentene. So if you do the first step, there are two possible products to form this bromonium intermediate. The bromine could form that bridging compound on the top face or the bottom face. In other words, it can be opposite the CH3 group or it could be on the same side as that CH3 group. The configuration of that stereogenic carbon makes those pathways different. This is going to be less crowded and lower energy to get there than this one. So what we're going to end up with is this first step will form more of this one than this one. So in this first step, we're going to form more of the structure on the left than the structure on the right. The major product of that first step is going to be this molecule on the left. When we carry out the second step to add the second bromine, we could either add that bromine to the position which I've indicated here, breaking the bond this way. This would lead to this product. That is the major product that's produced in this reaction. If we add the bromide to the other side, now it's coming close to that CH3 group. That's a higher energy pathway because there's more steric crowding there. So there's going to be less of that. So that pathway is not going to be optimal. That would lead to this product, which would be the minor product. So in this reaction, although it may not be 100% selective, we can actually think about this in every step of the reaction and predict that this should be the major product of that reaction. 